2020 is around the corner. We are looking back over the big events of the past decade and in the context of the games industry, we of course cannot and should not escape the monumental importance of Gamergate. It has single-handedly changed the composition of political investigation into gaming and its reverberations have even reached the White House. To reflect on the five years since Gamergate, Anita Sarkeesian, one of the main subjects of the relentless harassment campaigns, wrote an article for Polygon dissecting the causes and the legacy of Gamergate. Whilst 1200 words were certainly not enough to get into the detail of all the issues that may come from this theme, I still feel like the article misdiagnosed a few crucial aspects. Sarkeesian's central claim is that it was the big games industry's company's failure to condemn Gamergate in time that led to the subsequent rise of far-right politics. I would suggest a reframing of this argument. Games companies were never going to denounce Gamergate. One, because they nurtured a culture in which it evolved, and two, because it was going to temporarily dump profits, and these are fundamentally capitalist entities. Now capitalism is already reinventing itself to include marginalized communities in its machine, but the growth of it in the West is also spurring fascistic tendencies in other parts of the world. It is also untrue that the rise of far right has been enabled by Gamergate. I would argue it was the other way around, actually. Actors like Steve Bannon and Milo Yiannopoulos purposefully built infrastructures and stoked the fire to turn a population of relatively nonpartisan classic misogyny to a political project. We've seen a few attempts to reenact it, but none as potent without the help of organized far right. And let's not forget the leftist elitist technophobia and complete inability and lack of desire to, until very recently, engage with online spaces. We could easily have another Gamergate and the majority of the games industry creating press releases how they condemn it. That would still not get rid of the exploitation of women in the global south caused by the games industry. That would still not going to get rid of modern fascism that is tied with alienation and othering of the migrant, the trans person, all due to misdirected causes of material anxieties. Fascism thrives under capitalism. We shouldn't be encouraging a nicer, better version of it. Companies won't save us. Intersectional class solidarity will. Sarkeesian has been a relentless fighter for the marginalized communities in gaming and for that we're thankful and she will be remembered in history books. But if we are employing history in this instance, we need to think critically as to how the forces of capitalism precisely are enabling and exasperating such crises. Onwards and upwards nerds, join a union, solidarity forever. You just watched Left Left Up with me, Marianne Dechkalvita. Bye.